So this one, Bass Colors, I don't, they've got them in a few different sizes, but again, bluegill like purple, pretty cool. Uh, that's when I go to that. Whew. What is happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Today we've got an unboxing. This should be fun. This is a couple of small kind of here and there orders I put together. Um, some of them from Rattletrap, Bill Lewis, some of them from Cumberland, which I've actually got their shirt on, and a little thing from Tackle Warehouse. Kind of some this and that of some new stuff that I've been using and some new stuff that I want to try, and also just kind of stocking up on some stuff. But it's not all just for me. Of course, there's going to be a giveaway. I've got some extra stuff laying around here, some shirt stickers, all that. So make sure you watch till the end to find out how you can win. So the first thing I got was a, uh, a box. We're not going to waste any time, y'all. A box from Bill Lewis. They had... 40% off, I believe, for Labor Day. So I ordered a few new colors that I've never tried in the rattle trap, and I got some of the old standbys. Uh, I ordered a couple more because I was almost out. So first, a couple colors, if y'all have not used them, a gold, like chromish reflective, um, and the, uh, the regular chrome black back. If you guys have not used those, guys and gals, pick some up. Those are a couple of my all-time go-tos on the, the days where you've got sun out. That chrome is good in cleaner water, dirtier water with sun. I like to go to the gold. Um, now, I also got, I'll throw one of these in for you all too. I got some extras. Um, I also got one of the Bill Lewis shirts. I think it was like 10 bucks, 11 bucks, something like that. I was wearing it, I think on a live not too long ago, but awesome shirt. It's like that 50-50 cotton polyester. I love those. Okay, now for some of the new stuff. We're just going to kind of keep moving through some of these. So this one, they call it BER Trap. This red, I don't know what it stands for, but it's like red with vertical bars on it. Looks cool. I figured that'll be a good uh, spring color. And then, of course, I grabbed a couple of these. Tequila Sunrise. I didn't know they made Tequila Sunrise. I'm surprised my old man doesn't have a bunch of these that he throw in because uh, Tequila Sunrise is definitely his favorite uh, worm color to throw. So... Grabbed uh, one of each of those to try. Now, I couldn't order some of those without thinking of some pond colors. This is the Sunrise Perch. Now, the, the perch aren't necessarily in the ponds around here, but that looks pretty much like a bluegill pattern to me too. So I think on some of the perch lakes or ponds, that guy will do good. And then the pumpkin perch. You know, anything that's got like a, a sunfish, anything looking like that, I think those are gonna do good around here. Now, all these are one half ounce, three inches, and you can see on the front if you didn't already notice. You don't have to worry about changing the hardware out on these. They already come with must add triple grip. So I fish them stock. These are one of the few that I don't change hooks on. Uh, and the Bill Lewis, you know, the rattle trap has been a standard for a long time. You know, there's so much new stuff out, you know, red eye shads and all these other things. But, you know, back in the day, I still got some of the old, old, old rattle traps. They've been around for a while and they still catch fish. Okay, next up, I got this guy. This is the yearling bass color. Now, this is interesting because I honestly don't think enough about throwing like smaller bass, baby bass colors, and ponds and stuff around here. A lot of the ponds have, you know, just bass, bluegill, maybe crappie, maybe like some bullhead, but bass are predatory animals. They will eat other small baby bass, and bass colors I don't throw enough. So I got this to throw in some of the ponds around here, and then this is a young sunfish. It's almost like a white, iridescent, holographic, I don't even know what color to call that. I guess like a, a bone with like an orange belly and then this like iridescent color. Okay, the final two colors I picked up, Rayburn Red con Craw. Now Rayburn Red is a, you know, kind of a standard among red lipless. Rayburn Red's been around for a while. I've actually done some of my spin-offs of a Rayburn Red, but um, this is one I kind of like because it's a little bit darker. Usually it's more of like a, a deeper red and an orange when I see Rayburn Red. Um, so I like that color. It's got the gold, you know, kind of the darker back. And then this one here, this one's root beer. And I got this one because everybody makes fun of the way I say root beer. I guess it's root, root beer is the color of this one. I don't really know what it's gonna mimic. It's just a cool color and it's called root beer. So for you haters out there, it's root beer. Comment below and let me know what color you think would do the best in your area. I'm honestly the most excited to throw this one, the Tequila Sunrise. I don't know why, it's almost like a uh, like a morning dawn color, kind of that bluish, purplish top into like a pink, purple, lavender middle than just kind of like your pearl belly. Pretty simple color, but uh, I don't know. I'm most excited to throw that. Comment below and let me know what you throw. Okay, next we're gonna break into the box of uh, kind of random goodies. So first off, we're gonna go with some of the stuff from Cumberland Lures. So I'm actually wearing their shirt. They threw in a free shirt for me. Super nice folks over there. Uh, and if you've not checked out Cumberland Lures, they sent me some stickers too. Uh, I'm gonna throw in these stickers. I'm not really a sticker guy. I know a lot of people love those. I will throw that in your giveaway package. Uh, and also, I've got a, a Tackle Warehouse shirt. So I said that uh, I was doing the shirt giveaway, so 
All you have to do at the end is, well, I'll tell you. But anyways, this is a 2X, 2X large, uh, and also gonna throw in some random baits, but more on that soon. The nice thing about Cumberland lures is they wanna make good quality lures at an affordable price. Now, something for me that I was stuck on for a long time, this is how I heard of them, was their underspin. Y'all remember me fishing this a long time ago. You can see this one is all beat up. This is one of the few that I actually kept because I lose them so often fishing from the bank, but this dude has been beat up. Uh, I remember this color, this exact one was one that dad and I fished out on the boat uh, at one of the lakes that I grew up fishing on and this slayed that day, this underspin slayed. First off is just some of their generic ball head. Uh, this is a finesse ball head jig. I've got some one eighth and some one quarter. These are great for like if you're fishing the river or anywhere where you're gonna lose a bunch of stuff. They're not fancy. It is literally just a lead head. But as you can see on here, it's got two good lead keepers. Let me see if I've got a, uh, a soft plastic. People are chuckling right now thinking, oh yeah, as if Debo doesn't have a soft plastic. Hold on. I'm gonna rig this in the nose of the lure, make sure it comes down nice and straight, come out right in the middle of the back. That's the hard part. Because a lot of times the soft plastic will try and twist on you. Now, as you'll notice here, I actually rigged it a little bit too far up and I always do that on purpose because I'd rather go a little bit too far back here where it's kind of scrunched up because I'm just gonna take my fingers Rip that plastic a little bit and every single time you will get a nice straight swim bait as opposed to rigging it too short where it's hanging way back down then you have to take it out and break it. And after you do that and take it in and out of the front of this with these keepers, this has nice wire keepers, let me show you. But if you put that in the swim bait and take it out a number of times, it's gonna destroy that plastic in there and the jig head won't hold. So I always thread on a little bit more than I need. That way I'm sure that it's got a good straight hold to it. So you can see just a regular lead finesse head, uh, nothing special about it, they're cheap. I grabbed some of those for fishing some places around here, more on that to come. And of course, like I always say, I will leave everything linked below so you can check it out from Tackle Warehouse. Like I've said, I partnered up with them this year. So um, anything you buy using my links below goes a portion of that comes back to helping me in the channel. Uh, I don't have like a percentage off or anything. So if there's another place you wanna buy stuff from, go buy it from wherever, but I linked it down below. So at least you know what I'm talking about. Okay, next, I was really excited for these. They just released these uh, and they have them over there on Tackle Warehouse. They're shaky heads. Uh, now these are nice because I got a few different sizes, eight, three sixteenth and a quarter. So they've got them in a few different sizes. Um, I need to reorder these because I've actually thrown a bunch of these in my bag already. Um, I've lost a good number of them, hanging them up in rocks and such. That just happens. Fishing from, from the bank in big chunk rock, you're going to lose lures. I'm sorry. You know, I, I don't have a, a magical uh, equation. You're going to lose stuff. This is just a little one eighth ounce and you can see it's nice because it's got the actual screw keeper on there. So these are super easy to use. You just take the soft plastic, put it kind of in the middle of the nose and you just start threading that on just like so. Twist it right up on there, lefty loosey, righty is gonna be tidy. Like so till it gets snug on the end. Now for taking this and making it weedless, I'm gonna lay it just like that on the back of it. I'm gonna see exactly where I need to go in and then I'm just gonna take the soft plastic and pull it just like that. Every time, if you set it up that way, you'll get a nice straight soft plastic. It's a shaky head and it's just barely, you can see how I'm just barely touching it there and getting stuck like that. It's just barely in the soft plastic. So it takes a little bit when you set the hook to remove that hook through, but awesome little shaky head. You can see the nose of it is kind of pointed right there. You see that? It's kind of got a pointy nose. So it actually comes up over and through brush really good. Now, of course, I don't care what head type you've got. I think a ball head's probably the best. Um, but if you're around big chunk rock from the bank, you're gonna lose lures. And I've unfortunately lost a few of these. I've caught a few fish on them, nothing big, crazy yet, uh, but I honestly haven't been throwing the shaky head a ton. Now, speaking of the underspins, I think I already showed you these a little while back. They've got their new Apex underspin. Uh, Y'all saw these a, a while back. It was a day I caught 40 some, probably 50 fish. It was insanity that day. Like every other cast we were getting bites. Now these were not monsters, but any day you go out and catch 50 fish uh, is a fun day. Nice uh, little underspin head here. And I like these because, let me just pop it open. It's not a thin wire. So like on the uh, the owner, like the weedless uh, underspin type deals, they've got like a little long wire that holds the blade. This doesn't have it. It goes right to the swivel and right to a little wire arm. So you don't lose these, you don't break them off. Uh, good and sturdy. It's a cool head. They've actually changed it instead of being flat. It's more like a, a I don't know, like a bullet type shape to it. A little bit fatter as opposed to, well, let me just show you. That's both of them compared. So instead of being that longer kind of flat, you can see this is a little bit 
thicker, a little bit rounder. I like it, works good. Uh, doesn't have any sort of like crazy um, soft plastic keeper on here. Uh, I actually like that and you can use a little bit of mend it, believe it or not, Randizzle uh, told me that tip. You can put your swim bait up on here and use a little bit of mend it and it holds it super solid. I run it without and haven't had an issue. So like that a lot. I like their underspins. I've used those for a long time. Definitely recommend them. And you get them in a two pack. I forget how much they are, but you get a two pack as opposed to some of the companies out there. It's like six, seven bucks for one of them. So again, good deal. This is the Plum Crazy. This color I was showing you is the bluegill. It's nice because they've got kind of the two-tone color with the orange, uh, the bottom part there. And then the old white and chartreuse white. And you can see on the bottom there, they've got some of the chartreuse kind of on the chin of it. Like those, definitely recommend them. They've been working well. I got some of their new swim jigs. Now, again, you've already seen me use this. I took a few of them out, threw them in my bag, and I was using the bluegill color. I've actually had a couple of good days on that one. That's the only one that I've rigged up. Um, held up great. I really like it. So you can see their, uh, their swim jigs have that vertical line tie. So you can see the line tie is right there, vertical to the nose. I forget which color this is, but I really like that one too. It's like a green pumpkin with like a, a June bug top to it. Very nice color, uh, good skirt, gamagatsu hook on it. Let me just pop it out and show you. You can see they're a good solid hook. So it's not like a super heavy wire. So you don't need uh, you know like an extra heavy rod or anything to set that hook. Super sharp hook, good wire, but not soft. You know, it's not like one you're gonna bend out easy. Um, it's got a good weed guard to it, not too heavy, not too thin. And you can see when you flip it over, it does have just your standard lead uh, keeper there for your soft plastics. All in all, great little swim jig. I really liked it. Good head shape, good colors. Hope they come out with some more colors of those, but that bluegill color for me has been killing it. I'll link that one below. I don't know what color that one is, but again, bluegill like purple. They've got this shad color you can see with the white and the gray. I think they also have a white and chartreuse. I believe I threw that one in my bag already. And of course, for your dirty water, black and blue. So good colors. I am definitely liking those. Um, now I've only got one of these, but these are super interesting. So these are, remember that underspin head? The exact same underspin head. This is the underspin elite, but it's a feather. It's like a hair feather type jig. These things are crazy. I only got two of them because I don't, I don't really know how to fish these or where to fish them. I've never really seen anything like this. Pretty cool, wanna try it out some more. I just, I haven't thrown it. I think that will definitely catch some uh, some bass around here. These little guys are called the Rock Hound Hair Jig. These are all quarter ounce. I wanted to try this for colder water. I know the guys up north throw like marabou and hair jigs once the water starts to get colder. Kind of the same thing around here, right? I go to a, a little bit smaller jig. You can see here, it's got the hair on it, which underwater, this stuff really shrinks down and gets small. So it's not gonna look this big underwater. I know a lot of walleye guys throw like, you know, the hair jigs and stuff. But this has some of the like the round living rubber on the front of it. It's got the dual uh, wire guard keeper, which I like. I've used some of their other like the Procaster jigs that also have this. It's uh, basically like the, uh, the cross-size chatterbait, like I've been showing you all. Two good wire keepers to help you from getting hung up. Just a cool little jig head to drag around. That colder water is really where I plan on using it. I don't know, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Uh, I know a lot of guys who use it with a lot of success. So I've also got the quarter ounce black and blue for your dirtier water. And then for the ponds or bluegill spots, uh, I've got the green pumpkin orange. Should mimic a bluegill quite well. Okay, the second to last thing from them, I got some of their new jig that they redid called the hookup flipping jig. So these are all 3 8 ounce. This is a nice little flipping jig. It's a little bit different from the swim jig because where you've got that vertical line tie in line with the, the lead. They've actually turned the line tie to be horizontal. So as you're dragging this over, if you come up to a stick or a stump, this is a lot more uh, apt to ride up and over that. And even if it turns over, you've got a good size wire weed or uh, fiber weed guard on here. I always take these and spread them out. It always amazes me the number of people that don't spread their weed guard out. But when you get your jig stuck, it's usually when it, it flops over on its sides. So you're going to come up over a log and it flops on its side. If you spread that weed guard out, you will not get hung up in wood as much. It's got a good solid shorter shank flipping hook here. So it's not you know a big, huge, long hook. A little bit more compact, but a good solid wire. You can see there, it's not gonna bend out very easy on you. Good solid little jig. Uh, you'll actually see this. I was skipping one of these. Worked really well for skipping. Um, I ended up kind of tempting fate in the rocks and got a caught from the bank. That happens, but uh, I like that. Of course, I had to grab one in black and blue for the dirtier water around here. Whatever it is here in Iowa in the Midwest, black and blue does awesome. If you don't throw it in here around here, throw it. And then last up in the hookup flipping jig is the Bama Craw. Again, 3 8 ounce. It's got kind of your you know green pumpkin and the orangish kind of yellow belly. 
Um, good good color, great way to mimic crawfish around here, that green pumpkin-y, orangey. Um, we have a lot of like the brown too, so no doubt that'll do good around here. I need to break them out some more. I know Randall uh, recently has kicked my butt on his ball head of finesse jig, so I need to return the favor with some of these. Now, the last thing that I got from Cumberland that I've already had a, a pretty successful day on, yep, not a, a big surprise, the spinnerbait. I was super excited to see they redid their spinnerbaits. They had kind of just like the regular bullet head before. They have a multicolor process, so they've actually put uh, a different color on top. So a two-tone head, you can see that's got like the uh, iridescent smoke, kind of the white pearly. They've added eyes to it that are recessed, so these aren't gonna you know, get knocked and fall out super easy. Recessed down into the lead, so those will last a little bit longer. They've got a few different variations, Willow Willow, Willow Colorado. I just grabbed a couple, but really like it so far. It does have your soft plastic keeper, so if you wanna run like a fluke or a worm or a little paddle tail, you can do that. You can see this one has the red kicker blade. They've got a number of different colors. This is white and chartreuse, my favorite around here in most watercolors. Uh, is white and chartreuse, and I kind of got some of the spin-offs. This is a citrus shad, almost like your uh, like your sexy shad. It's got the white chartreuse, kind of some light blue and gray in there. Sexy shad also works really, really well around here. And this is the coleslaw color. I don't really throw this color a ton with like the white and orange. This one actually has double willow painted blades. So I go to a double painted blade in like dirtier, muddier water, that bright white really, really stands out, especially on kind of like an overcast day in dirty water, um, because as opposed to something like this, you're not getting flash from the sun. So go into that straight opaque blade, uh, that's when I go to that. But really, really liking these, the Hydra Spin Spinner Baits. I get three eighths ounce, normally for bank fishing. Um, if I need a little bit heavier, I'll go to a half ounce. So I got a couple three eighths and half ounce in these, but Really like them. I did have a good day on this already. You'll be seeing that video coming up. Caught some uh, some decent, good quality fish on it. Uh, like the spinnerbait, runs true. It's got a good wire. It's kind of mi middle of the road. It's not super heavy, but it's not super light. And that's kind of the trade-off because the lighter the wire you have, the more vibration you're gonna get out of those blades. But of course you have to bend it back after you catch fish. I know that's kind of uh, give or take, but I really like those spinnerbaits. Okay, last but not least, the Tackle Warehouse order. I re-upped and grabbed some more of these Bellow Gills from G-Crack. I've got a buddy here, Matt, uh, that I fished with recently. He really likes these things, uses them a lot. I only had the one pack that I got from Mr. Bass. I probably would have never bought them. I really liked them. I, I don't know, I've got this thing where I think they should work really well. So I got a couple different sizes and colors. Um, these are the small two inch. Those dudes are tiny. You can see they're compared to my finger. Those dudes are tiny, and I'm thinking Ned Rig some of those on the new Ned Rigs that I've made. I don't know. Why not? I got. I think that's just like the green pumpkin. I can't read what color's on there, but that's like a green pumpkin. I got uh, a re-up on the purple uh, and green pumpkin that I threw in that video not too long ago. These are the 2.8 inch. So I got a 2 inch. I got the 2.8 inch in this color. I really like that color. I also grabbed a pack of the 3.8 inch. This is exactly what Mr. Bass sent me. I got another one of these. Same color, I wanna try throwing it in some of the ponds around here, I think they'll do well. I got a 3.8 inch in this like darker black color with like a, uh, almost like a watermelony green pumpkin back. I don't know, interesting color. Uh, I don't know what color it is, but it's that color, 3.8 inch. I grabbed another uh, 3.8 inch. This is green pumpkin with like a chartreuse belly. So this would be like your summer crock color. I grabbed some 5.8 inch. I didn't realize how big these guys were gonna be. You only get three in here, but whoo, that stank. And I just, I just touched it to my nose. This smells like seafood popcorn, but this thing you can see compared to my hand, these guys are big. That's a, a, a six inch bait. Uh, I got some bigger owner beast hooks to try on this, but dude, does that profile not look like a, uh, a bluegill? like a dying bluegill falling down. I feel like that's a great bluegill mimic. And again, this is not all hard plastic. Whoop, probably covered in stubby hair. For those of you who don't know, stubby's my dog. That's not a different reference. Anyway, uh, you can see there that the body in the middle is the only hard part. Then it's got all these like ridges that catch water. Really cool action to it. That tail is wild. I didn't know how much action that tail would have, but uh, really cool. Want to try these some more. The uh, the G-Crack Bellow Gills, like I said, they're a little bit more expensive, but I do want to put in some time with them because I feel like nobody else out there has anything like that. And I feel it's a good uh, bluegill representation, good way to mimic bluegill. That stank is something else. So the uh, the Bellow Gills. Oh, the, here's some of the flashy swimmers. I actually forgot I got some of these. So when I was talking about the uh, 
the Cumberland Underspin. I really like these. These are the Oni Fla Owner Flashy Swimmers. I've used them a ton. You've seen them on my channels a lot over the years, or my channel a lot over the years. But they've got this little wire. My only critique is that I break these wires and I break these off a lot. Now they sell replacements, but I mean, that's just kind of one drawback. They're good quality. The hooks are awesome. And if you want to find like a belly weighted underspin, these do great. Again, that's my only gripe. So you can buy those. Um, just be careful where you're throwing them. But if it's got the good owner centering pin there, awesome at getting more meat uh, into the actual plastic so it doesn't rip the nose out as well. Good solid hooks, but that's what I was referring to earlier. I forgot I grabbed those. Then got some six out and four out of those owner beasts. They're nice because they have a really big deep belly on them. Now these are weightless. Uh, I was gonna try maybe the Bellow Gill weightless. Uh, I'm gonna try it weighted. Gonna just try a few different ways. So I grabbed a few pack of those because I was pretty much out. And then I grabbed a few pack uh, of the weighted size. I grabbed some six out. If you throw the uh, the Beast Coast Miyagi, the six out quarter ounce is what I go to. I got some of these bigger eight out. There's the uh, there's the six out quarter ounce. Those are money, especially for like kind of your mid size uh, soft plastic paddle tails. Then I grabbed some 4 rot uh, one eight ounce, just some kind of little finesse guys for smaller uh, plastics. To finish it off, I have never used these. These are the Berkley Fusion Underspins. I've had people ask me about them. It doesn't have as big of a, like a screw there. I really, really like the owner centering pins. They're easy to just, you know, push in the nose of and turn in. They're a bigger circumference to grab more meat in the nose of that soft plastic so you don't rip it out. I don't know how well these will do. I've used some of these, um, like the EWG hooks in the owner, or uh, the uh, the Berkley Fusion. Super harp, sharp hooks, good wire on them. I like how they work. Uh, we'll see about these though. I don't know, I wanna give them a try. These are uh, a five aught, one fourth ounce. We'll give those a try. But that is, that's everything in the box. So I need you all to comment below and let me know what are you the most excited for me to take out and, see, uh, and fish? The, uh, the Bellows Gills some more? Do you wanna see some of the new stuff from Cumberland? Comment below and let me know. Now the giveaway, I'm gonna throw just kind of a random box of stuff together, um, including this shirt. This is the free shirt you get from Tackle Warehouse. This is a 2X. So if you wanna win this, you just have to comment something below about I wear 2X or 2X would be great for me or my brother or my spouse, whatever. If you wanna win it, it has to say something about 2X. So I'm gonna grab a random comment and I'm gonna start pinning these because people ask, Debo, have you actually been doing the giveaways? I do them. I just message the person on the video and then I get in touch with them and give it away. But I'm going to start just pinning this comment so people can see hopefully when you go down that the giveaway's already been done. Comment below something about 2X. I'm going to throw in just kind of some random stuff together with the shirt, some stickers, uh, a thing from Cumberland, just kind of a little gift pack. But uh, I appreciate all of you so much. Now tonight's subscribe feature friend is my guy Stephen Elmer. Stephen, thank you so much. He reached out. I was talking on one of my lives about how I'm behind on giveaways. I really am. He said, hey, this is my formal application. Uh, I would like to be your giveaway person. And I just, I was chuckling because I'm like, dude, I wish I could. I wish I could afford to like pay you to be my giveaway manager guy. Um, I can't, but I wanted to say thank you, man. It means a lot. People that reach out to me like that and say, hey, dude, I'm willing to help however I can. Uh, I'm gonna try to do a couple different things, I think, for giveaways on live. So I think it'll, it'll turn out to be a little bit easier. But anyway, thank you for watching and thank everybody else uh, who has continued to watch and support. It means a ton to me, but I need to edit. It is already late. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time. And then, of course, for your dirtier, wattier. Everybody makes fun of the say.